the Annex Center's participation in the 2024 U.S. Open has ignited a significant controversy. Hi, and welcome back to Davis Sports Report. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to help us grow the channel and go ahead and turn on your notification to be updated as we drop new content. The controversy primarily due to his positive tests for banned substance earlier this year. Despite these positive results, Skinner was allowed to continue competing after the International Tennis Integrity Agency, ITIA, concluded that the substance entered his system unintentionally through a topical spray used by his trainer. This swift determination of the sauce that led to the lifting of his temporary suspension, enabling him to play while the investigation was still ongoing, dumbfounded many. This decision has sparked criticism, especially from Simona Halep, who faced a prolonged suspension under similar circumstances. Halep expressed frustration, noting that the disparity in how her case was handled compared to Sinner's. She pointed out that her inability to immediately identify the source of the contamination led to a longer ban. Halep was initially suspended for four years, but appeal was reduced to nine months, which she believed was unfair and inconsistent. Roger Federer also voiced concern over the inconsistency in the doping regulation. Uh, to have these allegations, and it's not something we want to see in our sport, you know, these types of news, regardless if he did something or not, or any player did, it's just noise that we don't want, you know, so I understand uh, the frustration of has he been treated the same as others, and I think this is where it comes down to. I think we all trust pretty much that Yannick didn't do anything, but uh, the inconsistency potentially that he didn't have to sit out while they were not 100% sure what was going on. I think that's the question here uh, that needs to be answered. But look, it is what it is, and we need to trust uh, the process as well. Of, uh, Andy Roddick also weighed in on Skinner's situation. Let's I see can't for the name. life of me think that he would do it. He would dope that badly to risk everything. Right. Because this is the shittiest doping effort that I've ever seen in my life, if it's actually <laughs> what, if that's actually uh, what it is. I'm going to tell you uh, things that I know as tennis testing, okay, to, to let you know what they picked up, okay? So this is from uh, Darren Cahill, who uh, I was on text with this morning, who is Yannick Sinner's coach. The amount in his system uh, is one billionth of a gram, or 58,000 times smaller than a grain of salt, which is completely consistent uh, with the explanation. The explanation is uh, trainer, body guy, had a cut, tried to heal it with some cream that is legal where he's from, is not legal here. Then massages Yon uh, Yannick. Yannick apparently has psoriasis. It rubs into the wound, and that's the way they think that it came up uh, on a test. Okay, so simple enough, but I I I'm not mad at people who say it's in your body, you're responsible for it. Maybe it's a three month suspension. I'm not mad. I'm also going to highlight the case of Tara Moore, who herself was suspended for 19 months on doping allegations due to her consuming a banned substance from ingesting contaminated meat. The controversy surrounding Sinner underscores the broader debate of fairness and transparency in handling doping cases in tennis, especially as Sinner continues to compete at a high level, entering the U.S. Open as the top seed. Looking at all of these cases, Simona Halep, Sinner, Maria Sharapova, and Tara Moore, the differences are in the quantity of the banned substance ingested, the length of time the player had been using the banned substance, and also, most notably, the player's ability to financially fight their case in the appeal court. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments. As always, thank you guys for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe. See you in the next video.